goddamn apex was brain dead all along. Suicide bomber. Another guy goes terrorists. Now hang on a minute right there. The religion or the theology that is responsible for the most deaths in that period. Number one is Christianity with a whopping 178 million. All right, so this is a video from the YouTube channel Smile to Jannah. I'm going to try to be as fair and objective as possible. If I fail, let me know in the comment section. Let's get started. Asalaamu As Alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. FaZe Clan is a fraternity of gamers who have followers in their millions. They have transcended the YouTube scene. My son on there with uh, you know, the football player in Arizona as well, as well Kyler Murray and, and the whole FaZe Clan is what they call them. And, <laughs> and have even now become a public company. Base Clan is going to become a public company. It's gonna be on Wall Street guys. Now I'm not here as a spokesperson for the FaZe Clan but what I wanted to talk to you about is one of their founders called FaZe Apex. A couple of days ago here's what he posted on his Instagram. Standing in front of the Holy Kaaba in the holiest city for the Muslims he wrote, no blessing in life compares to the blessing of being a Muslim. Nothing gives you more peace and purpose in this world. Inshallah, God willing, we will be reunited together in the next life in the highest levels of paradise. I highly encourage anyone who has any interest or feels like they are missing a purpose in life to look into Islam. May God guide us all to the best for us in this life and the next. As I was scrolling down I did see some positive comments by atheists. Not a believer but I gotta respect your commitment. I'm glad to see you doing what you love. Well as an atheist myself I don't respect anything, I don't respect any religion um, and I don't want to celebrate people celebrating um, an ideology that is harmful and superstitious and ignorant but at the same time my first feelings is like noticing somebody being happy and I have this desire to see people happy like I enjoy seeing other people enjoying life and even so I mean this is a contradiction but you know our feelings are not supposed to not contradict with each other, right? Like the fact that somebody is enjoying something and is bringing them peace and happiness to their lives. I mean, when you experience them experiencing that, if you enjoy seeing other people happy, that brings joy to you. You witnessing them, you know, um, enjoying life brings joy to your life, okay? Um, but at the same time, also, the thing that they're enjoying is maybe for them, it's not causing them to bring harm into this world, but them celebrating that ideology is giving legitimacy and to an ideology that overall is a net negative. So how do I deal with this contradiction? I don't. It is a contradiction in my mind, and I just let it stay there. I don't have to resolve it. That's how I, uh, that's how I look at it. I don't know. What do you think about it? Personally, not religious myself, but that looks extraordinarily beautiful. Peace to y'all. I mean, they are beautiful. If your atheism is making you think that you have to deny the beauty of mosques, churches, temples, or whatever synagogues, then you are being dogmatic with your anti-theism. Um, but at the same time, the beauty of the buildings doesn't really mean anything about doesn't any doesn't have any influence on the judgment we have on the religion. I mean, fascists have built gorgeous, beautiful buildings. We don't think any uh, better of their fascism because their buildings are beautiful. But at the same time, as an atheist, I don't see why I sh can't enjoy the beauty of mosques, uh, churches, synagogues, and temples. I get to enjoy them visually, look at them and be like, yeah, I, 
deny the religion. I am against the religion. I fight the religion. But at the same time, I get to enjoy looking at these beautiful buildings and nobody can stop me. That's one of the benefits of being an atheist. I'm not religious, nor will I be. But the Muslim way of life and beliefs are truly beautiful. I mean, if the Muslim way of life involved um, just visiting beautiful buildings and doing circles around them, then I would agree with you. Um, however, what you're seeing right now is not the only thing that is the Muslim way of life. Okay, If you read the entirety of the Muslim way of life, you might have a different conclusion. Then we had some positive Christian comments as well. One of them goes, I'm Catholic, but I find this to be very beautiful and peaceful. Peace to all the Muslims. That's very nice. I want peace for Muslims as well, which is why I fight Islam. As a Catholic, I'm happy you found your calling, Apex. I'm glad you're happy in life because that's all that matters, man. Phase up, bro, and keep being you. I agree as a utilitarian, I agree with this. Um, happiness, finding happiness is the only thing that matters. Uh, it's weird that a Christian and a Muslim here seems to be seem to be agreeing with this. However, happiness for who? Not just for one, this one individual, happiness for the highest number of people, right? So Islam, finding hap making this person happy, it would have been in isolation. That's pretty good. But the net, what matters is the net effect of Islam. Okay, so that's what you, if you want to judge Islam, Christianity, Judaism, or any other uh, set of ideas, you have to see whether the net effect makes people as a whole in the world throughout time more or less happy. Is it making people's lives better? Is it increasing well being? Or is it robbing people of potential happiness? I bet the latter, that's why I stand against it. I stand against Islam. But I appreciate that the goal here is to maximize happiness. I'm Christian, but damn, that seems like such a vibe being there. I can't object here. I'm pretty sure it would be awesome to be there. I wish I could go there. They don't let me there because I'm not a Muslim. However, one day, I'm, I, I think one day, we will have everybody would be allowed there and we would have a gay pride parade around the Kaaba. That will one day happen. However, I know that not everybody's experience is a positive vibe around the Kaaba. Um, there are a lot of reports of women being molested while they're doing the Hajj. So, yeah. Of course, some Christians uh, looked for an opportunity to preach. Why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. One goes, I love Apex, but Jesus Christ is the only way into the next life. I mean, I don't see what your issue with this is. Your entire channel is dedicated to invite people to Islam. If somebody was enjoying going to a church and they communicated that with you and somebody was like, okay, that's nice and all, but that's not the way to paradise. Uh, Islam is the way to paradise. I don't, would you object there? Um, I mean, technically, if Christianity is true, the the moral thing to do would be to remind people, like, yeah, this is not the way to heaven. Like, you would like, wouldn't the most moral thing to do be to try to save people from hellfire? I mean, I think, like, as a Muslim, you would see how this would be the moral thing to do if it was the other way around. Like, so I don't see what the objection here is. Another one goes, Jesus is the only way. Another one goes, Jesus is king. So much proof. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's so convincing. I mean, it's as convincing as the original post. You didn't object there when the original post was talking about Islam being the way. There were no proof offered then. So how come you're, how come you didn't say anything to the original post? And now you're saying it here? There's a little, there's a double standard. I'm noticing, I'm detecting a double standard here. Now I'm pretty sure the Kaaba gets covered in RE, yeah, religious education. But some people recognize it from Fortnite. One guy goes, he found the Fortnite cube, and someone goes, hey yo, it's Kevin the cube from Fortnite. I mean, I think the most concerning thing here is, 
you still playing Fortnite? I mean, does anybody still do that? I mean, a lot of Muslims probably play Fortnite and they're not going to appreciate your response. Why couldn't you just accept a joke? It was a, it was an okay joke. Your comeback was not as strong as the original joke. I think it would have been better if you just were like, okay, I, that's funny. You know, people would have appreciated you showing that you could accept humor. So you didn't really need to respond to that negatively. You could have been like, okay, yeah, that's funny. Okay. Like, yeah, I'm Muslim, but uh, I respect, you know, the Kaaba and everything. But that doesn't mean that we cannot take jokes. This would have been a great opportunity to show that. Now, this was my favorite comment that I saw. Yeah. One guy goes, you know what? I truly do trust your heart and beliefs. So maybe sometime down the road, I'll consider investing my time into this. Respect, Apenator. Nothing wrong here if by investing time you mean doing some research. Just try to be as unbiased as you possibly can. And also my advice is to look at both sides. Look at what people who have a problem with Islam, what are their arguments, right? If, you're, if you want to make sure that you're not being misled or brainwashed into something, don't just look at the people who have positive thing to say about Islam. Look also at the other side and see what their argument are, their arguments are and try to just you know it's impossible by the way to be completely unbiased. That it's okay to be biased a little bit because we're just we're human, right? But just try to notice your biases and be as objective as possible. Some people ask some genuine questions, yeah? Like this one. What's the box called? I want to look it up. Quite simply, it's called the Kaaba, K-A apostrophe B-A. I'm a Christian, but this looks amazing for real. Can someone explain what it is? Yes, of course. We pray at the Kaaba to Allah. The Kaaba is there to ensure uniformity and unity when we pray. Because as you know, or maybe you don't know, Muslims pray five times a day. So wherever they are on the whole planet, or even on another planet, we face one direction. How? How would that work if you're on it? I'm genuinely curious, okay? I'm really not trying to make fun here, okay? How would you direct towards the Kaaba if you are on another planet? Can somebody explain, like, what if you're on another planet and the Earth at that point in time where you're trying to pray is right above your head or right beneath you. Which direction would you pray to? Also, when? If you were on another planet, when would you pray? What if, like, are you going to match it based on the, the time of the day on Earth? Then where on Earth? Or is the time, like, the, the days on this planet probably are longer or shorter than planet Earth? So I'm genuine, like I'm genuinely not right now trying to be like making fun of Islam right now. I'm genuinely curious how would a Muslim, how would a Muslim scholar an answer this? If you're on another planet, when would you pray and towards what direction? Whether you're a king, whether you're a pauper, wherever you are, you're facing the same one direction. I don't mean to sound rude or offensive, but do you not wonder what may be inside it? Yep, of course. Yeah, we know there's nothing inside it. You can check a video on YouTube and it shows you. Yeah, it's not what's inside it. It's what it represents. It's interesting that the person that was inside the Kaaba was praying towards the wall because if I was a Muslim and I was inside the Kaaba, I would if I had to guess which direction I would have to be praying to while inside the Kaaba itself, I would think like it probably has to be the center of the room. So I would be pointing to the center of the room. That's That would be my guess. I don't think there is any hadith on this. So I don't even know if you are allowed to pray inside of the Kaaba. Like given that you're supposed to point towards the Kaaba when you're praying, wouldn't that mean that you can't? You shouldn't be praying while you're inside of it. As with anything sweet, it attracted flies. So it's time to swat some of these flies. Wallahi, you're finished. First of all, how dare you? Flies are Allah's beautiful creation. What is this with this anti-fly attitude? Goddamn Apex was brain dead all along. Another one goes, are you gay? 
and another one goes what the f apex verbal diarrhea it's good to get it out of your system Blah. make me sick i mean yeah these are rude uh comments I just, but I'm really curious about the person that was asking whether he's gay. What does this got to do with being gay? I don't understand. And of course, some went suicide bomber. Another guy goes terrorists, by the way. What? Now, hang on a minute right there. There was a study done, yeah, from zero to 2008. That's right. The religion or the theology that is responsible for the most deaths in that period number one is Christianity with a whopping 178 million yes that's right and number two is not Islam nor is number three nor is number four nor is number five. Oh, look the little dinky option in number six yes that's Islam no that is not Islam if you look at the study these are lives taken by Muslims I'm sure a lot of Muslims would agree with me that not everything Muslims do is the same as what Islam teaches. Um, so not everything that is, not every murder by a Muslim means that it's been endorsed by Islam. In the same way, the other parts of the study that is showing lives taken by Christians, that's not Christianity. That these are just people who happen to be Christians who have taken lives. It doesn't necessarily show that this is based on Christianity and also the lives taken here in the study that shows lives taken by anti-theists it's not showing that they're taking these lives because of their anti-theism so yeah this is not this is a not really a good way to show which religion or which ideology is more violent like that would be an almost impossible study because you would have to go and show all the lives taken and then see the motivations of the people behind them and then also ch now go check whether the ideology have had an influence on that action or not that would be how you would be able and that would be an, and this because this is historical you can't go really and check all these people and do psychological analysis on them so that would be an impossible study so the only thing we have to actually check is just to read the scripture and the ideology and judge whether and see whether or not it encourages violence or not that's the only way there's no other way the reason why Christianity ranks number one is because at the time when humanity had access to the most advanced weaponry, uh, the Christian countries were the most powerful countries. If it was the opposite, if at the time where humans have had, had access to the most powerful weaponry, the Muslim countries were more powerful, then they would have been committing the most amount of violence. Again, this is not a really a good way to measure whether Islam or Christianity or anti-theism promotes the most violence. Um, this is just shows what Muslims or Christians were doing and the, reli the religion is not the only factor. You, you can't isolate it. Just it's not, it's multifactorial. It's not that simple. Um, and again, Mus this is something that Muslims agree with. Like if when you see Muslims doing terrible committing terrible crimes it's muslims who say like hey don't judge islam by what muslims do so how come now you're using the study as a way to show like hey christians have committed christianity not, not not christians but christianity is the most violent religion this is not about the religion these are about the people so don't be a hypocrite maintain the same standards okay if we can't judge islam by the action of actions of muslims then we can't judge Christianity by the actions of Christians, and we can't judge anti-theism by actions of anti-theists. The comment itself, calling the man a terrorist or a suicide bomber, is a horrible comment. You don't have to go and look, show which religion is the worst religion or which ideology is the most harmful one to be able to identify that this man is a douchebag. He's just looking at a Muslim and be like, hey, terrorist or suicide bombing. This is like, obviously... A, a horrible come a horrible way you're doing guilt by association right um like i am somebody who's anti-islam an anti-islam activist but muslims themselves are the vast majority of them are decent people and the the violent ones are the fringe so my problem is with the ideology not the people any decent human being would never make a general judgment 
on any large group of people, whether they're being Muslims, Christians, atheists, or any ethnicity or any nationality, like you could just identify the bigotry because this is guilt by association and generalizing an entire group of people. You could just point that you can't, you don't have to turn this or like, no, it's not Islam that is the most violent. It's Christianity that is most violent. You just missed the point. You're like, this was such an easy attack on this person that was being a bigot. And you turned it into a competition over whose religion is more violent. By the way, I don't know how good the study is. It might be a good study, but it doesn't really come across as objective when it starts with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim in the name of Allah, and it has a decorative uh, Quranic verse at the very top. Yeah, I don't. That's not a good look. And let's not forget the 2008 report by MI5 that confirmed that the Muslim extremists don't know their religion properly and they don't practice it either. No, really? I mean, this is true for all Muslims, not just the extremists. Come on. Let's look at a study by Dr. Robert Pape, who says before 2003 in Iraq, there were no suicide attacks. Exactly, mate. Before 2003, only when the US entered Iraq, that's when we had the suicide attacks. Yeah, because religion or Islam is not the only factor it, it's a factor it's a contributing factor but it's not the only factor you need other factors like poverty or desperate conditions but islam adds to that okay but if you take out the other factors it's not going to be enough and if you take out islam in certain conditions those other factors are not going to be enough you need to add them together the point that people are making about islam being a factor in violence that it, it contributes to it they don't claim that you only need islam to get violence i mean to be fair though some people do and that's too simplistic but both sides are are being too simplistic when they try to make everything um you know correlated to only one factor you know most things in life are multifactorial but that takes you know a lot more nuanced discussions that whether or not islam by itself does or does not cause violence okay like people people want to simplify things and usually life doesn't work like that guess what some more flies yeah <laughs> lol it's literally a box well what do you know <laughs> It seems Einstein has finally cracked the code. Well, ha has he cracked the code? Because it's not technically a box. It's box shaped. Am I missing something here? Touch the stone. Nothing happens. Touch Jesus. You get healed. Amen. Just hold on to your amen, yeah? Isn't Jesus supposed to touch you, mate? Not the other way around. I do not know how this works. But Jesus, if you're watching, I do not consent to you touching me. Walking around a box isn't getting you to heaven, nor will sitting on Instagram watching gamers. But inherently you're right, walking around the Kaaba won't get you into heaven. But walking around it should inspire change, which should inspire you to do good, which should make it easier for you to get to heaven. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to be positive here. I, as an atheist, I don't think that's going to help you get into heaven, but it's good cardio. There, see, see I, can, I can be positive. All right, guys, uh, let's leave it there. Respect to my bro, Apex, and all the other brothers that are, mashallah, making this change and introspecting because it's only when you take time out and really introspect, look into yourself. The Quran invites you, wafi anfusikum. Yeah, look into yourselves, and yes, you will find the truth. Yeah, that's pretty good advice. If you want to make sure that you're getting both sides on this introspecting journey, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell notification. I will give you the other side. Also, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about what I said. I will read the comments so that your comments will help me do better in future review videos. I will keep doing these review videos, okay? I'm going to keep looking at that wall videos uh, from Islamic channels and i'm going to be reviewing them here so if you like that make sure you are subscribed make sure you're subscribed to this channel and make sure you leave a comment to help me become more productive and do better if you think i did well let me know i did well so you know that feedback always helps me but also if you think i did i said something that was incorrect or not objective uh just let me know so i could like do better right so i i honestly like do read their comments and they do really help me so please let me know what i did wrong 
And also, thank you so much for watching all the way through. This has been a Secular Jihadist video. You watching these videos make, helps the channel grow, but also your likes, your comments, that also helps the channel grow. So I appreciate all of that. Till next time.